Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's 5th grade, Module 18, Lesson 3. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. It says, I can solve a multi-step problem that includes measurement conversions. And the learning objective is to convert measurement units to solve multi-step problems. The prior learning is that students understood the relative size of units within one system of measurement, and students expressed measurements in a larger unit in terms of a smaller unit. All right, so moving into the lesson, we're on page 463. We have number one, step it out. It says brine is used to marinate a turkey before cooking. So to make the brine, 16 cups of water are boiled with spices. After boiling, half of the original water is left. Another three quarts of water are added before pouring the mixture over the turkey. Okay, so in this problem, I have like three different things that are going on here. First off, it's saying that I'm starting off with 16 cups of water. Then after boiling, I only have half of that. Then after that half, I'm adding three quarts. So right off the bat, I know that I have cups and I know that I have quarts, which means I'm going to be converting. So before I even move into A, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little cheat sheet up top. And you can totally do the same, same even any time that you have any types of conversions. So I'm going to use what I used last lesson, and I'm going to just write the letters. So gallon. And if I have one gallon, that means that I'm going to have for quarts, I'm going to have four. And that means for pints, I'm going to have eight. And then for cups, I'm going to have 16. Okay, so now I can go ahead and do this page just using that little cheat sheet up top. So moving into A, it says, first, find the amount of water that is left after boiling. So remember, it said after boiling, half of the original water is left. So if I'm finding out what's half of 16 cups, how do I find half? If I start it with 16, I'm just going to split it in half. So I'm going to divide, and that's what's going to go in that little circle, is the divide by 2. And what's 16 cups divided by 2? It's going to be 8 cups. All right, B. Now it says add the additional 3 quarts of water to the brine. Now how many, quart, um, how many quarts of brine are there? So now we want to go from cups to quarts. So I need to find out that I know I'm adding three quarts. So I need to figure out how many did I have left? Well, I know that if there's four cups to every quart, right? Because it's one fourth. So remember the four quarts would be 16, which means there's four times as many cups as there are quarts. So that means if I had four cups for every one quart, that means that if I had eight cups, how many quarts am I going to have? Well, if I have eight cups and it's four cups to one quart, if I have four cups and then four cups, that's eight cups total. So that means I'm going to have one quart here and one quart here. So I'm going to have a total of two quarts. That's going to be half of that boiling water. Then I'm going to be adding three more quarts. So I'm starting with my two and then I'm adding three more. And that is going to give me a total of my five quarts. All right. For C, it said convert the number of quarts of brine to a number of gallons. So now I'm going quarts to gallons. So from the Q to the G, I know that there's four quarts and one gallon. So let me just write that down for myself. Four quarts equals one gallon. And I know that I have five quarts, so it's not going to be a perfect whole number conversion, and that's okay. So I need to figure out what five quarts divided by four is going to be. 5 divided by 4, I can also just turn this into a fraction because remember fractions technically are division problems. So if I wrote 5 divided by 4 that way, now it's a little bit easier to see, right? Because we already know fractions. 5 divided by 4, if I were going to make this a mixed number, it would be 1 and 1 fourth. Or if you wanted to make a decimal, it would be 1.25. 
So I know I would have one and one fourth gallons. All right, D, how many gallons of brine are poured over the turkey? Now we're just writing it with our units. So we are going to have one and one fourth gallons of brine. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and flip the page. Now we're on page 464. Number two, it says, before the turkey is put in the oven, it is tied with twine. So if you ever um, have Thanksgiving at your house or you ever watch people that are cooking it, you'll see this. They like take the legs and take the wings and they wrap it up um, with twine. So that's all it's talking about right now. So a length of 150 centimeters is tied around the body of the turkey. So we have one length going around the entire body. That's 150 centimeters. Then we have three lengths of 160 millimeters each are used to tie the legs together and each of the two wings. So 160 millimeters to pull both of the legs together, so one at the legs, and then 160 millimeters to hold down this wing and 160 millimeters to hold down this wing. So that's where the three um, different lengths are coming from. All right, and then it said um, underneath, a new roll of twine has 10 meters of twine. If you use a new roll to tie the turkey, how many meters of twine are left on the roll? So we've heard centimeters, we've heard millimeters, and now we just have regular meters. So we're definitely in the metric system. So for A, it says write an expression for the total amount of twine used to tie the turkey. So don't convert yet. Just write me an equation of the four different lengths that you're going to be using in their original units. Then for B, how many centimeters of twine is this? This is where you're converting everything into centimeters. And remember powers of 10 for metric system. C, write an expression for the amount of twine that remains on the roll. So out of the centimeters, how much is left? Remember, keep it in two individual um, measurements. Just write me an equation of what that'll look like originally. Then for D, how many meters of twine are left on the roll? So now you're putting everything in two meters. And then just make sure you show your work. All right, go ahead and try your best on these four questions and then come back and we'll solve them together. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, great work. Let's go ahead and solve this together. So for A, I know the original was 150 centimeters, and then I had three of those 160. So all I'm gonna write is that three times. So plus 160 millimeters, that was once, twice, and there's my third one. So that would be my equation, just the original numbers that they gave me, and I'm adding them all together. Then for B, it says how many centimeters? So I already have my 150 centimeters from the first number. Good to go, I'm already in the unit I need. So I'm gonna take that 150 centimeters. That's good to go. But I have three of those 160 millimeters. So if I'm going from millimeters to centimeters, my unit is getting bigger, which means I'm going to need less numbers. So if I have 160 small pieces, I'm going to need fewer big pieces to equal the same amount of objects. So in this, because it's always um, a power of 10, 10 apart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the number 10 times smaller or one tenth. And if you've learned the power of tens, especially in decimal form, you know that you can take the decimal at the end and just hop it over to the left one time. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So when I have my 160 millimeters, what that's gonna equal is if I take my 160 and I have my decimal here, I'm gonna make it one tenth as big or 10 times smaller by taking that decimal and hopping it over to the left one time. So now my decimal is in the middle. So what it would actually equal is my 16 centimeters. So with that 150 centimeters, I'm going to go ahead and add that 16 centimeters three times because it's 160 all three times. So I know it's going to be the same amount of centimeters each time. So I'm going to have 16 centimeters once, twice, and three times. 
All right, then if I were going to add them together, 150 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 is going to be 198. So we have 198 centimeters. All right, 4C, now it says write an expression for the amount of twine that remains in the roll. So up above it said a new roll of twine has 10 meters. So I know that's my starting point. If I have a brand new roll, I'm starting with those 10 meters. And I just figured out how much twine I'm using. I know that it was 100, 198 centimeters. So that's how much I'm taking away and I'm keeping them in their original units. So just 10 meters minus my 198 that I used. All right, now I need to find out how many meters of twine are left, which means I need to move from centimeters to meters. So again, powers of 10. So if I have 198 centimeters, I need to figure out how many meters that are. So I know that centimeters to meters is a hundred, just centi, like century, it means a hundred away. So now I want to move two hops. So power of 10 once and then twice for that hundred, those two zeros. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my decimal right there and I'm going to move over once and then twice. So now my decimal is between the one and the nine. So I'm going from 198 centimeters to 1.98 meters. Okay. So now that I know what my centimeters are from meters, all I have to do is subtract that new number from 10. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to have my 10 meters minus my 1.98 meters for my new number. And if I did 10 minus 1.98, you need to make sure you line up the decimals. And I am gonna show you how to do this since it is in decimal form. So if I did 10, right, my decimal would actually be at the end. So I'm actually just gonna put a decimal there just to remind myself. Then if I had my 1.98, I need to make sure that my one is in my ones place, then I have my decimal, then I have my nine, eight right here. In order to subtract, I do need to have numbers above that 98, so I need to add in those zeros for when I subtract. All right, so now borrowing across zeros, I'm gonna borrow from the one, making it a zero, make this a 10, cross it out, make it a nine, to borrow over there, to make it a nine, and all the way over to the very last zero. So 10 minus eight is two, 9 minus 9 is 0, bring down the decimal point. 9 minus 1 is 8, and then I just have a 0. So my final answer is going to be what's left is 8.02 meters left of twine. All right, go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems on your own for this lesson, and I'll see you back for module 19.